Hi, my name is Brian Mohammed, and this is the narrated presentation where I'll take you through the initial client-based consultation for exercise prescription. With regards to the overview, I'll provide some general client-based information in the new client screen. Then I'll go over the results and findings from the pre-exercise screening tools, which includes risk classifications and medical histories. From there, we'll look at the findings from the initial consultation, including client and practitioner goals, client profiling, and fitness characteristics. The needs analysis will identify the relevant activity and demands. From there, the summary and action plan will provide testing protocols as a means of getting the client closer to their goals. Okay, so the new client screen looks something like this. We have a 22-year-old client who weighs 82.1 kilograms with a height of 167.5 centimeters. The BMI is 29.3 and the client's blood pressure is normal. This will enable us to determine if the client has any risk factors. Okay, so the pre-exercise screening process provides information that allows the practitioner to determine if any risk factors exist prior to any form of exercise prescription. It lets me know if certain exercises should be avoided based on medical history, current physical activity levels and baseline measurements. In this case, the client answered no to all the questions in the PARQ test pertaining to medical history, injuries and other reasons they should not do physical activity. The result is that they are able to start being more physically active. The adult pre-exercise screening produced similar results. Stage 1 was compulsory and resulted that the client may proceed to undertake light to moderate intensity physical activity. Stage 2 was optional and showed that the client may partake in aerobic exercise up to vigorous or high intensity. So moving on to the initial consultation notes. The profile shows that the client is highly competitive in powerlifting. Their current bench press is 130 kilograms, the squat is 205 kilograms, and the deadlift is 215 kilograms. The client aims to achieve a combined total of 600 kilograms within six months, putting him amongst Australia's best in his age category. Rightfully so, the client goals have been determined to be increasing strength and power, specific to powerlifting under exercise goals. Maintaining consistency in high training intensity has been determined to be the behavior goal, and the health goals are avoiding injury and building lean body mass. Okay, so now we'll look at the needs analysis, which breaks down the sport of powerlifting with various research. It will remain specific to the client goals of improving strength and power in powerlifting, and we'll look at how injury fits in. So as we can see, the sport of powerlifting assesses performance via the squat, deadlift, and bench press exercises. The squat and deadlift use large muscles of the lower body, such as the quadriceps, gluteus maximus, adductor magnus, erector spinae, and others. Research suggests that performance and testing can be aligned with the one rep max test, the vertical jump and other tests requiring lower body strength and power. In contrast, the bench press performance is closely related to upper body strength and power. Protocols may include a 1RM test for the bench press, the push-up test, medicine ball throws and others that stimulate similar muscles. Muscles predominantly active are the pectoralis major and anterior and middle deltoid which assist in horizontal shoulder flexion, the triceps which assist in elbow extension and serratus anterior for abduction and external rotation of the shoulder. With regards to injury, a study in 2003 found that over a year, 108 injuries were reported in 101 powerlifters of various ages, body types, genders and levels. If we put this into context, approximately 1.1 to 1.2 injuries per powerlifter per year and 4.4 to 4.8 injuries per 1,000 hours of training. What was positive was the fact that a majority of those injuries weren't severe. In fact, 78% of injuries were mild to moderate and generally all the powerlifter had to do was stop performing an exercise for up to two weeks. It's been recommended that to reduce the severity of injuries, powerlifters should improve whole body muscle balance and flexibility, especially around the shoulder, lower back, elbow and knee. So how do we use all this information? Well, we know our client's goals, we've determined our practitioner goals and we have researched and investigates powerlifting and injury prevention. From here, we can provide recommendations of specific protocols that align with improving the client's performance. Emphasis has been placed on lower and upper body strength and power. Given the research, it's appropriate to test the client's 1RM in the squat, deadlift, and bench press. Flexibility is also important, hence the sit and reach test. Additional testing will include the vertical jump for leg power and the medicine ball throw for upper body strength. An improvement of these results over time will notably increase muscular strength, power, size, and ultimately performance. Okay, so thank you for viewing this presentation. I've taken you through all the steps in the initial client-based consultation. We had a look at the new client screen, the pre-exercise screening, the initial consultation notes, which determine the client and practitioner goals, the needs analysis, which identify the activity and its demands, and last but not least, 
the summary, which include the action plan as a means of moving forward.